It feels so good to have made our very own in-game time system. But sometimes it can be annoying to debug when you have to keep going back and forth between the running game and the Godot engine to set a new time and date to debug from. It would be much easier if we could just adjust the speed of the time from inside the game. Then we could turn up the speed when we needed to test something in the future, turn down the speed when we're paying close attention, or maybe even pause the in-game time altogether. This is what we'll be working on in this tutorial. My goal is to create something that we can use for debugging. But the same approach can be applied if you want the player to be able to adjust the speed of the in-game time. Just remember that in this project, the game itself, so the player's movement and so on, isn't actually affected by the in-game time. At least not yet. You could add that later if you wanted. But now, let's get started. We actually already have the foundation set up for changing the speed of the time. If we open the script for the time system, we will find the ticks per seconds variable. This is what we want to change from inside the game. If we wanted the player to be able to change the time, then we could start by creating a few UI elements for this. But as I said earlier, my focus is debugging. So for now, we'll just use key input for this. Okay, so let's first add a few input actions for controlling the speed. We can do this by going to the project settings, then input map, and add three new actions. One for increasing the speed, one for decreasing the speed, and finally one for pausing the time. Now, back in our time system class, we can add a new method for handling our new input actions. In this method, we can then check if any of our new input actions is just pressed. For now, let's just add a pass for each of these if statements and add a breakpoint at each of these so we can check that everything works as expected in a minute. But first, let's also remember to call our new method in the beginning of the process method. So now we have our input set up. The simplest thing to move on to is pausing the time system. For this, we will just add a new boolean variable at the top of the script. I'm calling mine is paused. Down where we register the pause input actions, we can then toggle this boolean. And then, right after we handle the input in the script process method, we can then check if the time system is paused and return if this is the case. And now, let us test if this works as expected. Now, let us increase and decrease the speed of the time. We could just add and subtract to the ticks per second value, but this makes it difficult to get a specific speed or back to the speed you had before. And honestly, 
I just feel it's an annoying solution. So instead, I want to move between specific speeds that we can select before running the game. To keep track of the speeds we can choose from, we can create a new array of ints at the top of the time system script. You can really add as many as you like here. And then we also need to keep track of what speed we're currently using. This is done with an exported index variable that specifies the index of the array where the speed we're currently using is located. Now, when we update the date time, we have to use the correct speed from our new array. We get this using the new index variable. Down where we handle the input, we can then decrease or increase the index when the corresponding input actions are just pressed. But now there's a risk that the value of the index is outside the limits of the array. So the last thing we need to do is to clamp the index between 0 and the size of the array minus 1, since the array is 0 indexed. OK, so now let's test and see how it all works. One final thing to consider is if these input keys should be available when the player plays the game. As I said in the beginning of the video, I just want these features to make debugging easier. So it really shouldn't be available in a release build of the game. If you also want it like this, then take a look at the OS class in the Godot documentation. Here we find a method called isDebugBuild that we can use. This returns true if we've used a debug temple to export the game or if we're playing it from inside the editor. In our time system script, we can then check if this is a debug build and then return if this is the case right before calling the method that handles our input. I've uploaded a few exercises for this video for all paying members and Patreon and YouTube. You can use these to dig even deeper down into what we've been covering in this series. And both the project files for this video and my solutions for the exercises will as always be available for some tiers and Patreon. And that was all for this video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you like this video and want to see more like this in the future. Next time we will use our time system to create a day and night cycle for the game.